Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the basics of using an air, uh, air conditioning set of manifold gauges to diagnose some different problems with your air conditioning. This is kind of a follow-up to the video of why your fan won't turn off. We talked about if you have high pressure in your system, in your air conditioning system, it can cause that. So I'm going to show you how to look for that today. Talk about some different pressures and what they mean. If you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, share it with a friend. I've been looking at my analytics and it shows that only about 20% of you that watch my videos are subscribed. That means about 80% of you people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it if you could do that for me. You can get a set of very affordable manifold gauges at Harbor Freight for about $60. And learning how to use them is priceless. Now before we start, it's important to know Whenever you're working with air conditioning, always wear some safety glasses or eye protection because you're dealing with pressurized uh, R134. If you spray yourself in the eyes, you can get harmed really bad. So just know that. Now, we're going to do most of this video with the truck off. I'm just talking about different things because once I turn this thing on, it's going to get loud and you may not be able to hear me. So I may have to voice over that part. This is by no means a complete air conditioning diagnostic video. I'll have a few more to come talking about some different problems. This is just going to be some basic information on how to use these things. And you can do further homework from there or we can discuss it further. Now, the first thing we want to do, there's a debate over static pressure and dynamic pressure. Static pressure is with the truck off. You can get some readings. Uh, they're not all that valid. Better readings come from when the truck is running. But there's one static pressure that I want to get. and. This truck has been sitting, it's at ambient air temperature, uh, which is probably in the high 70s. I don't know exact temperature right now. So we wanna make sure that our high pressure side and our low pressure side are equalized at ambient air, te air temperature. And kind of what that's gonna tell us a little bit is that after the truck was shut off, the pressures were able to equalize, indicating there's no obstruction inside the line. So we're gonna, we're going to do that here quick. Now, the red here, these, you got to put these hoses together. They come inside a, a kit. You want, you want to start with all these valves closed, all four valves. Make double sure that they are closed, okay? Now, that one's up here, turn the natural way. The ones on this end, they turn the opposite way you would think. So make sure you follow the directions on there. Closed is counterclockwise, opposite of what you're used to. And up here, closed is the normal way. This is important because if these valves are open, when you try to put them on your, on your valves there, you're going to shoot some uh, refrigerant out right at your face. We don't want that. So you got to locate your, your two valves here. Well, first you'll notice they're two different sizes. So you can't screw this up. The high pressure side is bigger than the low pressure side. It's going to be the same on here. So locate your valves. Every truck, they may be in different spots. Some might be up towards the firewall more. Take these caps off. Don't lose the caps. You want them on there for dust protection. All right. Okay. Red's going to go on the big one. You just pull this collar back, push it down on there. It'll snap on. So it's on there. Okay. And then same thing with the low pressure side, the blue. Okay, we're on there good. Now I'm going to open these valves and we're going to get some pressure here. And we want to, okay, first before we do that, a good set of gauges, a nice set of gauges will come with a temperature correlation chart. Or you can download a temperature correlation chart off the internet. So right here, probably can't see that I can barely see it it says Fahrenheit so out here we got the temperature it'll show you now pressures depend on ambient air temperature and somewhat humidity so it shows at 80 degrees ambient air temperature we should be at about uh, 90 pounds something like that I can't read that real well without my glasses uh, so the important part is that these two are equal. It's not so important what the pressure is right now at this point. It will be later when we start the truck up. So I'm going to open these two valves up. Just open them slow. And, and you can watch your gauges here. There. 
Okay, we opened the low one, jumped right up there, opening up the high one. Okay, you see that jump up too. So, on the low side, we're at about 86 pounds or so. On the high side, I'd say we're right about there. So, we're pretty even. Like I said, it's, at this point, it's not that important what the numbers are. It's important that they're equal, they're equalized. When we're done with this, and we shut the truck back off, we're gonna watch these gauges and see that they equalize again. It could take 10 minutes, it could take an hour, but the important part is they equalize it in a, at a steady rate, okay? Uh, that shows that there's not really an obstruction in there. It's able to function properly. Before we start the truck up, well, eventually here what we're gonna do is start the truck up, put it on high idle, and crank the air conditioning wide open. Then we're gonna let the truck warm up. Then we're gonna look at our pressures, okay? What's gonna happen when the compressor kicks in, this high pressure is gonna go up, the low pressure is gonna go down. When the compressor kicks out, the high pressure is gonna go down, and the low pressure is going to recover a little bit. So kind of what I'm looking for, I just got a range here of what I'm looking for with this truck is on the high side, when the compressor is running, 150 to 300. Now at 300, the engine fan should kick in. When the engine fan kicks in, it's going to start bringing that pressure down some. That's what the engine fan's job is. That's why when you're reading high pressure, or I'm sorry, if your engine fan is on, because you're reading high pressure and because you have a faulty air conditioning high pressure switch that switch just reads you have high pressure all the time whether you do or not if it's bad so with the fan on it's trying to bring that pressure down and if the switch doesn't recognize that the pressure is coming down the, the, the fan will just keep trying it'll stay running so in this when pressure creeps up the engine fan kicks in It'll drop that pressure down. When it drops down so far, the engine fan will kick back out, okay? And the low pressure side should kind of move kind of like in reverse of the high pressure side. Now, the compressor will kick in and out based on what it needs. If the compressor is sh what we call short cycling, which is on off, on off, on off. We don't want that, that's a sign of low charge in the refrigerant okay this truck is functioning the way it should so I'm not going to evacuate the system or, or do anything here we're just wanting to read the gauges to see how everything uh, that it's working properly and I'm going with that range of pressure because like I said too it can depend on ambient air temperature humidity and stuff like that but that's kind of the range I want it to be in you can look on a correlation chart to to see what what yours should be at and they're all gonna honestly they're all gonna run slightly different and for the low side i'm looking for like 30 to 50 pounds is where i expect that will be uh, i've repaired this air conditioning a, a couple times when i've had leaks put a new compressor on so i kind of know the range that it runs in now let's just discuss while well, it's quiet here before it gets loud some different pressures and what they could mean. If you're reading low pressure on the low side and low pressure on the high side, but they're equal, say they're both reading 20 pounds, uh, that's a sign that your compressor could be bad and it's not running and make, building pressure. If you're running low pressure on both sides, but there's a difference in the pressures, say your low side is at 10 PSI, and your high side is at 60, they're both low, but they're not equal, then that indicates a low charge in the system. You, you could be uh, low on re refrigerant. So also to go along with that, if you're reading high on both sides and they're, and they're equal, that also could be a compressor issue if, they're, if the pressures are equal. But if you're riding high on both sides, but the pressures are not equal, say the low side's running at 
at 90. Well, that's too high on the low side. And this high side pegs out at 300 and it doesn't come down. Well, that's high on both sides, but they're not equal. That means you got probably too much refrigerant in the system. It's overcharged. If you're running high pressure on the low side and low pressure on the high side, you could have an expansion valve that's stuck open. And because it's stuck open, it's not letting it build pressure on the high side. So that would be an indication of high pressure over here and low pressure on the high side. Now, if you have a reverse of that situation and you have low pressure on the low side and the high side is pressure is running high and it stays kind of high, then that would be an indication of a blockage somewhere. And typically blockages happen a lot of times in the expansion valve again. Although it can be, uh, you could have a pinched line, your collapsed hose, your receiver dryer could be obstructed. You could have something wrong with the condenser. If you've ever had a compressor shell out on you, you could have put some metal into the lines and that metal could build up somewhere and cause a blockage or get stuck in your expansion valve and and kind of block it. So expansion valve needs to open and close and it wouldn't be able to do that. And once again, I don't know if I said it or not, but high pressure on both sides, unequal, can be an overcharge in the system. So I think I'm ready to start this truck up. We're not going to let it run for very long. All I want to show you is that how how okay so besides pressure mainly what i'm looking at is moving through the needles i don't want them stuttering like this on either side and um if you have a stutter like that sometimes that could be like a, a bad valve in the compressor so we don't want that and i also want to see i don't know what the term for it is but i call it recovery time uh like when the compressor kicks out and the high pressure drops and the low pressure starts to rise, I want to see that they kind of happen at the same time like they're supposed to, like there's no lag time or delay. That just indicates things are flowing in there uh, like they're supposed to. So you're going to see, uh, my engine fan's going to start up right away. I just got done washing my radiator, so there's going to blow some water out, make a mess a little bit, but I got to warm this truck up before we can take readings. You're going to see the high pressure rise, but then you're going to see it drop and it's going to stay low, but it's going to, if the engine fan is running, it's going to, it's going to come down. So we want to kind of read it with the fan on and fan off and, and just make sure that it's, it's rising and falling like it's supposed to. Uh, and then the, the low side will do what it does. So I'm going to start this thing up and warm it up and we'll, we'll just take a look and I'll probably have to, uh, block out the sound because it's going to be really loud. Okay, right now you can see the compressor's off. Let's watch this thing. Okay, the compressor just kicked in. You can see the high pressure rising a little bit. It's above 150. The low side has dropped. The engine fan is off right now. So let's just give it a second here. Okay, the compressor just kicked out. You can see the high pressure dropping and the low pressure pressure is climbing some. Oh, it will kick back in here shortly. All right. I see what's happening here. I don't like. My pressure's not going quite as high as I want it to. And the low pressure is also a little low. Uh, let's just watch it here a little bit. See what happens. And you can tell by how that's cycling. That compressor is kicking on and off. And... Uh, it's short cycling. That's called short cycling. So I'm a little bit low on on uh, charge here. Air conditioning is, however, blowing nice and cold. But uh, it's good to know this because I should suck the system down and recharge it. I mean, we are, we are within technically within spec, being oh, over 150 pounds. But uh, I like to see it a little bit higher than that. And the low pressure side is, uh, is, is lower than I'd like it to be.
Okay, so I just shut the truck off and we want to watch that these pressures equalize. They're going to go very slow. This could take 10 minutes, it could take an hour, but the important part is that they do equalize. You can see the low pressure is creeping up slightly, very slowly, and the high pressure is falling very slowly. You, uh, it's probably falling a little too slowly for you to notice, but I can see it standing here. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it. Last time I checked it, it took about 15 minutes for it to equalize, which is really good. Uh, equalizing means we don't likely have an obstruction. So we can go ahead and take this apart here. You want to close your valves, make sure they're closed nice and snug. them apart just like we put them on. Make sure you put these caps back on so you don't lose them. Okay so what we saw here is is it functioned the way it was supposed to. However I feel like my pressures were a little bit lower than I wanted uh, just a little bit and my compressor was short cycling which indicates between the, the pressures being slightly low and the compressor short cycling would indicate to me I have a low charge in, in my uh, refrigerant, my R134. So, but it's still blowing pretty cold for now, and I don't have the time, so maybe next weekend when I get to it, we are going to uh, recharge this thing, and I'll, I'll try and show you how, <clears throat> I'll try and show you how to do that. So, we're all done with this for today. So, understanding these different pressures, what they do and what they mean, can go a long ways towards trying to figure out what's wrong with your air conditioning and hopefully save you a, a fair bit of diagnostic time. If you decide to take it into the shop, you'll know just what's wrong before you take it in there. Now, one thing I do always when I charge the system, I always put dye in it no matter what. Because if you have a leak somewhere, it's easy to find with dye. I can find it without the light or the, uh, the glasses. Uh, for finding UV leaks, you'll just see green uh, coming out. Check all your fittings and, and, and stuff, your condenser. Even check in these valves here. These things can leak. They are, it's just a little valve stem in there. You can replace it. That way, if you do go into a shop for repair, you can save a lot of diagnostic time. You can say the leak is right there because they'll otherwise dink around and evacuate the system, put some dye in it, and then try and find the leak. If you already know what it is, you can save yourself a lot of money in diagnostic time. So I hope this video helped you out a lot and we'll see you next time.